party would invest in rail. Call uh, Simon O'Connor. Well, we, we've just heard a, a supposed uh, discussion lecture in, in economic rationality, but uh, I, I'm struggling to see either rationality or the, the economics in it. And we've, we've heard from the Green Party tonight that uh, we just need more money uh, in rail, and we'll just find that from somewhere. And an earlier speaker was talking, I think, around the Privacy Commission. Oh, we just need more money. We'll, we'll find it and put it in there. And, and uh, we heard from others of the opposition, you know, one, one way that we'll reconcile some of this economics is to move into a monopsony approach towards electrical market, because that'll be, that'll be good. Monopsony? And then when we... Uh, monopsony <laughs> is when you just have... Yeah, have you not heard... Monop we have to give you some education. It's a great wow. word. So, on one hand, we've got all these extra expenses, all these extra... All these ex Monopsony... Yeah, it's a great one. Um, We've got all these ideas of all this extra spend, and yet we're hearing all these, these anti-approaches. And it was, well, and we heard from the New Zealand First about, oh, we've got to invest more. Um, and then we are saying, yeah, exactly, it's not their money, as my colleague points out. It's not someone else's money. It's been photocopied. It's been taken off someone, um, you know, bribe people with their own money approach we've seen before. But we heard then from New Zealand First that we've got to put more money in, but then we are to pursue uneconomic uh, approaches. So we're going to then buy uh, rail systems, be it carts or uh, whatever. We're going to build lines which are uneconomic. And somehow that's rational economics. So we're just going to keep putting more, more money in. So I think what is important is to move into context, because this government has invested over $750 million, $750 million of New Zealand's taxpayer money into Kiwi Rail over the last three years. This government has shown a very strong commitment to the rail network over ten years to turn it around, to put it onto its feet. And those of us who were actually uh, there uh, at the review heard that the uh, board of Kiwi Rail of the New Zealand Rail Corporation are working constantly readjusting their numbers to move Kiwi Rail into a position where it can stand alone. And I suppose that's an element of where the National Party comes in, because we heard from Labour and the Greens, they want us hands-on government. I said it before in another speech, they really want the hands on your wallet and around your throat. We want to empower Kiwi Rail to be able to stand on its own uh, two feet. And you'd think the Greens would be all about that, actually, wanting to stand on your own two feet, because that's what National's all about, anyway. On your own feet, isn't that good for the environment? They want to stomp on other people's feet, uh, feet the Honourable uh, Member uh, Minister points out. It's, it's just crazy, crazy economics. Crazy economics. As I said, $750 million invested into Kiwi Rail. And this is some investment uh, we, we haven't had for over 50 years. When the uh, uh, board came in front of us and discussed what was occurring, they noted that the new trains that uh, in this government facilitated the buy-in of, the locomotives in 2010, it was 35 years... 35 years since uh, these had been bought before. This is a government committed, committed to building up and strengthening uh, Kiwi Rail. And they've got some great successes. We've got some great successes. We know that uh, freight, uh, freight is up. And Julianne Genter is right. It works really well in some places. It works really well when the rail line runs past your business. But in this modern day economy, this modern day economy, and not one that lives in some sort of socialistic or communistic uh, utopia, we live in a just in time dynamic where importers and exporters want to be able to move their products just in time, which means they want it off the ship, they want it brought to their supermarket just in time, not being stored up, not being stored up in warehouses, not waiting for a rail network to go off in that direction. It works well for elements of Fonterra. I notice, actually, I notice that New Zealand Rail is working, I think, towards Darfield to put in a, a rail line there. They are responsive. But once again, we're coming back to a fundamentalism around the rail network, that this is the only way that things are done. That is not the way the economy uh, operates. But we come back to it. $750 million. We've seen a growth, we were told, in select committee of over 25% um, of freight uh, within Kiwi Rail. We've noticed that about 17% of the income for Kiwi Rail is through their inter-islander, and that's an increase of about $5 million in the last year. They are building uh, their capacity, they are building their strength, and they are doing that, Mr Chair, on good, rational economics. They're not making things up, they're not doing an economic or a uh, transport fundamentalism. It's good, 
economic policy. You invest and then you allow the board and its individuals within the company to work their best for all New Zealanders. Well said. Um, the question is that the report of the Transport and Industrial Relations Committee on the 2011-12 Financial Review of New Zealand Railways Corporation be noted. Those of that opinion will say aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Members, I understand the next entity members wish to debate is Solid Energy New Zealand Limited. The question is that the report of the Commerce Committee on the 2011